some controversy. We've been absolutely flooded with calls from viewers on our Showbiz on Call lines. So listen up, because we're not only going to play some of your voicemails, but right here, right now, we are kicking off our own style challenge with Cindy McCain and Michelle Obama in the mix to decide if their style has anything to do with this election. Speaking of style, Katrina Zisch, national correspondent for InStyle magazine, is with us tonight in New York. Also from New York, Don Yannick, who is the editor-at-large for Life & Style Weekly, and a fashion force to be reckoned with, Ashley Banfield, True TV host and anchor of Banfield and Ford in session. And she joins me from the True TV cameras in New York. All three of you are fashion forces to be reckoned with. Good to see you. And, and, and you ladies, you know, so much has been made about how Sarah Palin looked on Wednesday night when she accepted the Republican vice presidential nomination. Um, people have been talking about everything from her hairstyle to her makeup, even her glasses. Katrina Zisch is too much being made of this or is this just reality? Women are watching her every move, including her fashion choices. I think this is reality. The moment that you become a public figure and you're in the public eye, anything is fair game, whether it's relevant or not. And Sarah Palin knows this and she's making it very clear that she's not up there uh, on the stage or she's not in the limelight because she wants to be evaluated on her fashion. She clearly downplays that in order to be taken seriously in the political arena. And she, she's well aware of it. She's not trying to be a fashion plate nor does she want to be. And she certainly has bigger priorities. She has talked about that. And we always invite our viewers to give their opinions by calling into Showbiz On Call. And by the way, we will be giving that number to you in just a minute. But right now, I want you to listen to a message left by Caitlin from Colorado about Sarah Palin's beauty. I think that the problem we have with Sarah Palin is not only because she's a woman, but it's also because she's a beautiful woman. And I think that that can be very intimidating to some men, and as well as it can create some jealousy with women. But I think that we could use that actually to our advantage when dealing with foreign leaders. I think that she would be an asset. Ashley, Sarah Palin has, has you know, said she might want to intimidate the guys in Washington, but do you think her beauty is a double-edged sword here? Well, I'll tell you, um, if we're talking to Caitlin right now, <laughs> <laughs> her beauty is going to get her nowhere with Hezbollah. They wouldn't even shake my hand when I interviewed them. The Saudis, <laughs> right. not so bad. They're royals. They're pretty good with women leaders. Um, other Islamic <laughs> republics, maybe not so much. But you know what? Look, a woman's a woman. Condi Rice is in Libya right now. I'm sure she's being treated really well. I don't think with foreign leaders it'll make a big difference. I think with Americans, we're obsessed with this crap. I'm not sure why. Ask Katie Couric. Everybody talked about her Manolo Blahniks and her legs instead of her presidential interviews. And I can imagine that it's extraordinarily frustrating for uh, other women who are in high-placed public positions as well. Yeah, I'm sure it's maddening. I, I certainly don't think their sartorial style should be <laughs> anybody's focus. Don, it, it sounds crazy, but do you think that Sarah should play down her beauty a little bit, or should she ramp it up even more? <laughs> some are suggesting one, some are suggesting the other. I think that Sarah Palin has been playing it really, really well. Um, I think she should just be who she is. She needs to be taken seriously in Washington. She needs to be taken seriously by voters. But that said, she also has to be somebody that people relate to. To. And like it or not, that's what it's all about, really, in the end. It is a bit of a personality contest. Yes, it's about your issues and your stance on them, but it's also about how people see you. You know, Michelle Obama or Cindy McCain could become the next first lady. Katrina, are their looks and styles going to be scrutinized just like Sarah Palin's? <laughs> their looks have already been scrutinized. Uh, everybody's talking about uh, Michelle Obama buying something off the rack and wearing it at The View, which is, of course, very topical today. And then talking about Cindy McCain visiting Oscar De La Renta's showroom in New York. But it's important to remember that these two women have very different styles. and. Both of them stick to their personal style, which is what they should do. It would be disingenuous for somebody like Cindy McCain to dress any other way. She's always had classic style. She's always been elegant. And that's something that she should stick to. And both women are doing this. They're, they're really yeah. sticking to their personal styles. And their personalities are coming through. And therefore, they're, in a way, we are getting to know them as uh, potential first ladies. So it is yeah, relevant. They, they're expressing themselves through mm -hmm. through their style and through yes. their fashion and and you know we know that Cindy McCain is very very wealthy worth millions and millions and not long ago John McCain was actually criticized for not knowing how many houses he had Ashley some have said maybe Cindy needs to tone down the bling because it could create a disconnect with voters especially in this struggling economy what do you think about that Sh does she need to worry 
I don't think she has to worry, but I think there's something to be said for this. Remember when um, the first President Bush didn't know about the grocery scanner and the rest of us just rolled our eyes? <laughs> I, I don't think the McCains are that bad. But listen, when you say you don't know how many kitchen tables or houses you have, it isn't good. And I'll tell you something. She already has stated on stage at the Republican convention that she comes from humble beginnings and that she and her family um, have achieved the American dream. Republicans love it when you can get rich. They just don't love it if you flaunt it. <laughs> right. She, she has been adamant that her family has worked for what they have. Um, and right now I do want to listen to another person who called into Showbiz On Call. Take a listen to John from Rhode Island. Although I think she's hot and sexy, uh, I think she's a distraction to the whole process of what politics are about. Please, John, I appreciate your call, but I, I could not disagree more. Don, do you find it ridiculous that something Sarah Palin's beauty is a distraction from politics? I mean, what do people want? Her to, her to look haggard with mismatched <laughs> shoes? What would people say then? Yeah, that's absolutely crazy. And of course, then she'd be criticized for that because she wasn't taking exactly. her position seriously enough. You know, it's really interesting because that's actually the first negative thing I've heard about Sarah Palin's appearance. Uh, Republicans and Democrats alike have said, you know, she's a gorgeous woman. She's young. She's spunky. And you know, agree with her stances or not, but you can't disagree with that point. I think what she's going to come under fire more for is her position on the issues, and that's exactly the way it should be. Yeah, and that's what she wants people to be talking about, her stance on the issues. Um, Katrina, you know how women are influenced by fashion. You're an editor for InStyle. Um, is this too, too absurd to think about? Some are suggesting that maybe people will be influenced at the voting booth by what Sarah Palin wears. Um, do you think that's just crazy talk? I do. <laughs> <laughs> it, it does sound like crazy talk, but I know uh, historically first ladies have definitely had a hand in kind of reflecting their their husband's uh, political stance or perhaps their party platform by what they're wearing. Nancy Reagan is an example of one of those things. So as silly as it may be, what a woman in politics wears is important. Now, we've never seen a female vice president in the White House before, so it's, it's going to be a, kind of a different road. But unfortunately, people will be looking at what she's wearing. But if she changes it and tries to be someone who she isn't, then that will be the problem. If she sticks to what she's been wearing, sticks to her personal style, and doesn't even worry about the fashion, doesn't worry about the comments, then she's going to be just okay. Mm -hmm. Ashley, 10 seconds. You think if she stays with her own personal style and doesn't listen to all the criticism, she should be fine. Oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you. I can't focus. I was just staring at a picture of Mitt Romney. I can't, I can't think. <laughs> I love it, Ashley. <laughs> yeah, I think that's right. a good what, enough answer. <laughs> you're, you're right. I mean, what do people want her to do? Wear a suit and tie for every appearance? My goodness. It, it is Being a hottie is not a bad thing, Mrs. Palin. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. She's got the brains. You're right. Katrina Zish, Don Yannick, Ashley Banfield. Thank you all. We will leave it there for now.